On this week's episode of Nikon's Birding Adventures, we're in South Central Nayarit in Western Mexico. And on this week's episode, we're going to take you birding around the enchanted lagoons, and then we're going to make our way up higher into the Sierra Madre, where we are going to sit with the Huichol community, learn about their culture, and then head off in quest of the tufted jay. Let's go birding. The state of Nayarit in Midwest Mexico covers over 17,000 square miles of mountains, prairies and stunning coastline. The birding capital of this biodiverse region is undoubtedly the port of San Blas, where a dedicated birder can nail down 30 different endemic bird species within a half hour's drive. One can also venture further afield to nail down additional Mexican endemics. Our guide for this trip is Francisco Garcia from Safari San Blas. Our first stop is the beautiful Laguna Santa Maria, one of the high altitude volcanic lakes in Nayarit. The grounds around Santa Maria Resort are really good for birds, not just the Mexican endemics that you can find here, but also a lot of birds that we're familiar with in North America. So you can come here and you can get a lot of the migrants around the grounds, but then you can also find some very special Mexican endemic birds. We've got a whole group of blue hooded euphonias here, and the euphonias are typically very brightly colored birds with yellows, blues, turquoises, and these blue hooded euphonias are especially pretty. They've got a nice orangey belly and then this beautiful, beautiful bright blue hood. Another name for the blue hooded euphonia is elegant euphonia. We've got a whole bunch of Mexican parrotlets, really noisy birds at the top of this tree. This is an endemic, very cute, tiny little parrot. Just on the edge of the cobblestone road are these rows of flowering trees and these hold a great diversity of hummingbirds. Right in this one spot over here, we've had white-eared hummingbird, beryline hummingbird, violet-crowned hummingbird, cinnamon hummingbird, and even plain-capped starthroat. So we've got the beautiful cinnamon hummingbird here, with that bright cinnamony color underneath. And he's a very aggressive hummingbird. He's chasing all the other hummingbirds here, especially the white-eared hummingbird. And there's a the female that keeps coming back to one perch. She's got characteristic white ears. And this is a Mexican endemic, the white-eared hummingbird. Oh, look at that violet crowned. Look at the violet crowned coming into the perch. Got him? Francisco, Got sitting. Him. He's right there. Violet crowned. He's moving his bill from side to side like that. Oh, you can hear that. Uh, do you hear Ferruginous fr Pygmy Owl calling? Yeah, right that's Ferruginous Pygmy Owl. That's, that's, that's why the hummingbird is going like that, because of the Ferruginous Pygmy Owl that's calling in the background. And all the hummingbirds are going crazy here with the noise. Looks like they're trying to mob this Ferruginous Pygmy Owl. And there's the culprit that's driving these hummingbirds wild. 
is this ferruginous pygmy owl sitting in the tree. You can see those bright yellow eyes and the characteristically large feet on this pygmy owl. Very, very large feet for a small owl. Got a streak-backed oriole at the top of that flowering tree. Thick-billed kingbird. That's quite nice. And just below it, black-headed grosbeak. Very good looks at a black-headed grosbeak. That beautiful bird, huh? The rufous-bellied chachalacas, endemic to northwest Mexico, are so confiding around the hotels of the high-altitude lagoons that you can get some point-blank looks. You know, just on this one cobblestone road around the lodge at Santa Maria Resort, you can see up to 120 birds in a day. Fantastic diversity all around us over here. Really good birding along this road. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and by Riviera Nayarit, Mexico's Pacific treasure. We've had a great morning's birding at Laguna Santa Maria, and we've now made our way up to another high altitude lagoon called Laguna Tepeltiltic. And here we're gonna go and look for a really, really skulking bird, the blue mockingbird. From what I've seen of this bird already, it's gonna be just about impossible to get any footage of it. it makes a very brief appearance, and as soon as you get the camera on it, it's gone. Very, very shy and skulking bird. You know, it's one of those birds that just come out for a few seconds and hide inside the bushes, the thickest part. He's chasing the blue mockingbird. He looks like a cat when he's hunting, you know, walking really slow. Blue mockingbirds are totally unlike other mockingbirds in that they are dedicated skulkers almost never coming out into the open. But like other mockingbirds, they have a varied vocal repertoire and can mimic other birds from the thick scrub. The best way to find them is to listen for their call or to hear them scratching for insects and worms in the dry leaves. Well, that's been several hours of hard work. Blue mockingbird, what a bugger of a bird. Gee. Blue mockingbirds are endemic to Mexico, with a few vagrant records from the southern United States. Russet crowned motmot, this is a beautiful bird. Russet crowned motmots are only found on the Pacific Slope in Mexico, and an isolated population lives in Guatemala. These beautiful but overlooked birds are blue-green above, with russet caps, long blue racket-tipped tails, and black and blue facial feathers. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. We spent the night last night in the little town of Tepic, the capital of Nayarit. And this morning we got up at 4.30 in the morning and we're making our way up into the Sierra Madre to go and visit with the Wichol indigenous community to go and look for Tufted Jay. Let's go birding. What's going on here, Mexican uh, roadblock? Yeah, roadblock is we have to have the cows move their culo. This is really, really good. This is another endemic, Western Mexico endemic, spotted wren. We've got two of them here sitting on top of a rock. There's actually a group of about three or four of them. Very noisy little wren, very territorial. So they'll clamber around on these rocks and in these oak trees. There he is right on top of the rock again, advertising their territory and trying to chase away any other birds that come close. Oh, he's back on that little rock again. Awesome, they're calling all around us here. 
two together. Really, really nice. We're on our way to go and look for Tufted Jay. We've been driving up this gravel track through the Sierra Madre and we just stopped here to take a break and he has a group of three now spotted wrens. This is also a Western Mexican endemic. These spotted wrens are really, really easily identifiable by their large size. This is a super large wren, the spotted wren from the western part of Mexico. Another great bird we came across on the way to our base camp was the petite black-headed siskin, a bird which is only found in the mountains of Mexico and northern Central America. So it's late morning now and after a four hour drive from Tepic, we've arrived at the magnificent ecological cabins at Guadalupe Ocotan perched right at the top of this beautiful sheer cliff face with the wonderful Sierra Madre in the background and from here we're going to head out and look for Tufted Jay. This can be a tough bird, it's got a very very limited range so we're going to enlist the support of the local Huichal people here to help us find it. Hey James, I want you to meet our local guides, the Huichal community. Hi. Carmelo. Nice to meet you. Carmelo, James. Francisco, James, great. We're actually the first guests here at the cabins and we're right at the top of the Sierra Madre and I don't think I've ever seen such brightly colored bird guides. Francisco, one of the Wichol elders, explained to me the need to spend time sitting by the fire before we embarked on our search. The Wichol place the highest spiritual significance on the powers of the sun and the importance of fire. Sun and fire together are an integral part of their spiritual and everyday lives. Now there's a lot of habitat here, so we're going to split up into groups and we're going to go, the three of us, in one direction and the other guys are going to go scout around the camp in the other direction. Carmelo heard two birds or a couple of birds calling to each other and uh, we went over to the top of the mountain here looked down and we just saw one bird flying past another but the only way to get to them is down this really steep incline and uh, we've been kind of working our way down here I'll tell you something it's tough going down but it's going to be way harder coming up Say, that's one of the hardest days birding I've ever had. We didn't get the tufted jay. I got cut by branches coming up. Try to take a shortcut up the cliff. Um, we didn't get the tufted jay, but I got an amazing, another endemic Aztec thrush. Flew up into the top of a pine tree and I managed to get my scope on him. So at least we got another endemic today, but it was a long day's birding, long and hard, up and down this cliff face. Hopefully tomorrow brings better luck. This big fire that we built tonight and the music and the traditional and the community coming out here is really a great symbol. We feel very, very honored because we know that we're going to have good luck for tomorrow for the Jay. <laughs> for the Tufted Jay in the morning. That's all we need is the Tufted Jay. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks. Enjoy nature effortlessly. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. There's no Cuisinarts around here. So now we're trying the salsa that's been made pretty much right in front of our eyes. I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit picante. 
but that's good. Warm us up. Mm. Mm. That is good and hot. This is Birding from the Edge. Got him. Francisco spotted some jays all the way down the cliff. They're very, very visible. Big, big birds with white wings. It's pretty precarious right here. We're right at the edge of like a, I don't know, 600 foot drop all the way down to the bottom. Yesterday was a trip, man, all the way down to the spring where we hoped the jays would be and uh, climbing this really, really steep precipice. I mean, we basically came up this cliff but in an area where there wasn't rock. I got gashed over the forehead by a big spiky twig and a couple of the guys fell and slipped on the way up. But this is the way to do it. You need a bird from the camp itself. We got it. But it's so far, man. Wow. To be able to see them from Gosh, we've got to be 500 feet from them, maybe more. And to be able to still get footage of them from the top of this cliff is fantastic. And now we've just got to hope they make an appearance, come closer. I didn't know that he'd take birding from the edge seriously. Look at it. There is a way to get down, but it's not going to be fast. The fastest way to go down there is jumping. Yeah, I need my flying suit. I guess the fire ceremony worked last night. Sitting that big fire and doing the dancing and here they are, tufted jays. Yes. These jays were moving fast along the bottom of the cliff and we've got to try and intercept them. Okay guys, let's go. They've got the jays. And they're just moving so quickly. They're moving so quickly. Have you got any? Where are they? Oh, there, 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 at the top of that tree. Okay, let me get behind you. Okay, there we go. Oh, man, the light's really, really bad. Oh, he just flew. There, 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 there. Low down. Looks like he's caught something. Jesus, this is radical. They're close, but we can't see them. I mean, we can't get some footage of them. Come, let's try to get ahead of them, Francisco. Try to get ahead of them. Whoa! You want to make sure you uh, proceed with caution down these cliffs, for sure. I've got the jays. They've all come to this one tree. And I'm on one now, filming right on the edge of the cliff here. I nearly went right off the cliff. And I've got all the jays, four of them in the tree here. We had them feeding, scurrying around, feeding, picking up things, and it was really interesting behavior because they'd actually get an insect, they'd pick up acorns, they'd carry it in their bills, they wouldn't eat it where they were, and they've all flown to the edge of the cliff here and they're sitting in one tree like they're meeting for dinner at the dinner table and they're all eating their food right now. Fascinating behavior. While they were foraging, we could not film them at all. They were up and down and they were carrying the food in their beaks. Really strange. And now we've got all of them in the tree on the edge of the cliff here. Yes! Tufted Jay. Tufted Jay is also known as Dickie's Jay after one of the early Mexican ornithologists, somebody that did a lot of work around the Sierra Madre region. And the tufted jay is seriously threatened. It's got a very tiny range, only about 8,000 square miles in total. And in fact, under Mexican law, tufted jay is classified as endangered. What a spectacular bird. Tufted jay or Dickey's jay. And they'll forage in these groups amongst the pine oak woodland, looking for food. They're normally in groups of about four to 12, four to 16 individuals. They'll actually breed cooperatively. So there'll be a dominant pair and they'll have helpers 
which are often juveniles, that will help them feed and bring up the babies. I love filming jays because they're such comical birds. They're always doing something. We've had great footage of them eating, breaking open acorns, even eating little pieces of bark, trying to get at insects inside. Fascinating behavior. And the way they work cooperatively as a group is really similar to the Weechul indigenous community here because they do the same thing. They go out and forage, they gather food, and then they all come back to the fire at night to prepare it and eat it. And that's very similar to what these tufted jays are doing. Woo! So, did you get him? You have no idea, amigo. No idea. I was running down, I'm like, there's pine needles, there's trees going past me. Because they were moving quick. I get to the edge and I suddenly slip on my back, holding my scope like this. And I grab onto a tree with my one hand. Three feet later, that was the Whoa. end. And I sat there, and the jays sat in the tree and they ate, they were feeding. Beautiful, couldn't have been better, man. Gracias, thank you so much. Thank you, amigo, thanks for bringing us here. This place is absolutely spectacular. You've got to come to this place at the top of the Sierra Madre and get our golden bird, Tufted Jay. Yeah, see you next week. Never been